All right, y'all, welcome to the show. Um, today, we're all over the map, so uh, I'm going to get into something. I'm a couple days late on this story, but I definitely wanted to dive straight into the deep end. So we have Mehdi Hassan versus Matt Taibbi on the issue of the Twitter files and Elon Musk and like 47 other things. Um, really, really interesting debate. I'm going to lead with that in just a second. We also have Twitter versus Substack. A war has exploded, and of course, Elon Musk's own pettiness is getting in his way, to say the least. We also have a bit of a, a bit of a crisis here when it comes to the, the medication abortion front because we have two different courts who have ruled different things, and one very conservative court banned it. The other one said, no, this is allowed. And um, so now there's a bit of a constitutional crisis unfolding. And then later on in the show, we'll be talking about the, uh, the Democrats who got expelled from the uh, Tennessee government because they protested in favor of gun reform. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Basically, the Tennessee GOP has gone full authoritarian, uh, just a colossal overreach of their authority. And there's already been a massive backlash, and we may have a reversal in terms of the decision to expel them. Which, again, it's crazy to even say those words as if they can just, quote-unquote, make a decision to expel lawmakers like that. And then uh, also we have Marjorie Taylor Greene versus Laura Loomer. I mean, this is like the fringe of the fringe of the right-wing kooks. They were, of course, at war over Kevin McCarthy being speaker. Um, and now the war has spilled over into the Trump campaign. Uh, they are vicious, man, and I'm enjoying every single second of it. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. So uh, Mehdi Hassan, oh, shameless plug, you guys know the deal. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the like button, blah, blah, blah. You know the whole spiel. Listen to the full show on Spotify, the audio podcast, whatever. You get to just fit. Support the show on Patreon. Um, okay, so Mehdi Hassan um, had on Matt Taibbi. Now, this came about because they were having a little Twitter clash back and forth. Um, Mehdi Hassan quote tweeted something which had that amazing story of Modi, the leader in India. He is working with Twitter to suppress dissent, basically. There's a big story that broke on that front. We covered it on this show. Um, and Mehdi Hassan quote tweeted that and said something to the effect of, I'm sure Matt Taibbi's all over this. Now, of course, he was being tongue in cheek because Matt Taibbi, even though he's, you know, led the front, uh, led the, the battle on the Twitter files, he hasn't, like, he's shied away from criticizing Elon Musk specifically when Elon Musk goes in a censorious direction, and Elon Musk has done that now a number of times as the head guy at Twitter. But to this point, Matt Taibbi has been mums the word when it comes to Elon Musk. So uh, Mehdi Hassan was being a little cheeky with that tweet, and Matt Taibbi responds to it and says, like, basically, like, how do you know what I think? Invite me on the show and let's talk about it. And so uh, Mehdi Hassan goes, bet, I'll invite you on the show. So he does exactly that. They end up having uh, almost a 30-minute debate. Now, I wish we could get into the entire thing here, but we can't. We just don't have the time. There's a thousand other stories we have to get to. So I have, like, the final portion of the debate, which is probably the meatiest portion. But again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strongly recommend that all of you um, go and listen to the full thing. I can't recommend that enough, so go do that. The title is Mehdi Debates Matt Taibbi on the Twitter Files and Elon Musk. Okay, so now, uh, this is where it gets... It was spicy the whole time. This is where the spicy is just <laughs> over the top beyond recognition. So let's watch and we'll break it down. What's interesting about Elon Musk is that we checked. You've tweeted over 30 times about Musk since he announced he was going to buy Twitter last April and not a word of criticism about him in any of those 30 plus tweets. Musk is a billionaire who's been found to have violated labor laws multiple times, including in the past few days. He's attacked labor unions, reportedly fired employees on a whim, slammed the idea of a wealth tax, told his millions of followers to vote Republican last year. And in response to a right wing coup against Bolivian leftist president, Evo Morales, he tweeted, we'll coup whoever we want. And yet you've been silent on all of that. How did you go, Matt, from being the scourge of Wall Street, the man who called Goldman Sachs the vampire squid, to being unable, unwilling to say anything critical at all about this right-wing reactionary yeah. anti- Now, before we get to um, Matt's response, here's the real reason, in my opinion. He wants access to the Twitter files. And so he wants access to what he views as like this massive story. He says it's the biggest story of his career. I totally disagree with that. I think his reporting during Occupy Wall Street on Goldman Sachs, I think that was honestly, way more important and way better if I'm keeping it real. Okay. So, uh, but 
He wants access to the Twitter files. If Matt's being honest, he's going to say, like, yeah, I want access to the Twitter files, so I almost have to hold my fire on that front so I can get that story and release it. Let's see what he says. Ian Billionaire. Hello? Am I still on? Yes, you're still on. How have you, well, I'm just wondering how come you've never criticized Musk, despite all that? Look, I, so I, I, I like Elon Musk. I, I met him. This is part of the calculation when you do, the, do one of these stories. Are they going to give you information that's going to make you look stupid? Do you think their motives are sincere about doing X or Y? Uh, when And, and I didn't. I, I, I thought. I mean, I, I did. I thought his motives were sincere about, about the Twitter files, and I, I admired them. I think he did a tremendous public service in opening the files up. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with him about everything. And when I, I agree with you, but you never, you never disagree with him. You've gone silent. People would say that's I'm, access journalism. No, no, I haven't done, I haven't reported anything that, that, that limits my ability to talk about Elon Musk. So will uh, you criticize him today for batting journalists, for working with Modi government to shut down speech, for, you know, being anti-union? You, you can go for it. I'll give you as much time as you like. Would you like to criticize Musk now? No, I don't, I don't particularly want to. Um, oh, Matt. Why? Why, Matt? I mean, again, I know the answer. I think he feels like if I criticize him, he's going to cut off my access to the Twitter files. I'm going to lose this story. But like, then just say that. Just say that. He didn't. He did this whole song and dance. It looks like I'm reporting to you guys from heaven right now. It's very sunny behind me, apparently. And so we got all these glares coming out. I apologize for that if you're, if you're, if you're watching right now and not just listening. But anyway, I mean, he, he could just say that. Don't do this whole thing about like, bro, I can criticize Elon Musk if I want to. And then he's like, do you want to? And you're like, no. <laughs> Especially, look, here's the main point too. Especially because Elon is guilty of the exact sorts of things that Matt Taibbi cares about and reports on. If his whole thing was like, social media censorship is really, really bad. And then he has a lot of reporting in the Twitter files, which a lot of it is good stuff in that we are learning new things. We are learning about censorship. We are lose learning about an uncomfortable relationship between the government and Twitter management. Well, here is Elon Musk who has taken over Twitter being just as censorious, if not more censorious in many ways. And his reaction is like, oh, I don't want to criticize. Okay. But then it's hard to make the case that, you know, you're like, I'm being principled in my crusade for free speech and against censorship. If you were, yeah, Elon Musk would be at the top of the list of the people to criticize on that exact front. I mean, look, I'll give just one example. Remember the fight between the Elon Jet account? It was like um, Elon Jet versus Elon Musk. Elon said, this is private uh, you know, information. I'm being doxxed. Now, according to the public record, that's actually not true. Flight data is public, so you're allowed to report it. So uh, there was a fight between the Elon Jet account and Elon, and Elon Musk himself. And there were a bunch of journalists who reported on this fight. They reported on this fight. And you know what happened? All those journalists were banned. Now, eventually they were brought back, but you had people like Matt Binder and Ken Klippenstein and many other reporters for like the Washington Post and maybe the New York Times, all these big reporters were banned. And so, I mean, look, that's, a, that's an example, y'all, of like, it's the exact wheelhouse of Matt Taibbi. This censorship. The Modi government, which is, you know, the genesis of this whole conversation. Elon is working with the Modi government, censoring on their behalf. And Matt's mums the word on that. And so, yeah, it's kind of hard to take the, cru the principled crusade about censorship seriously when these big censorship issues, you have nothing to say on them. It, look, I didn't, I didn't criticize them really before. Uh, and I think that what the Twitter files are uh, is a step in the right direction. Um, but it's the same Twitter that he's running right now. I don't disagree with him. If you want to ask, I, I think it's a question. Matt. Well, I'll ask you a specific one. You, you, you ask you a specific one. No, 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 no. It's not in bad faith, Matt. Sorry. You say that Twitter is. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my question. You're saying that he's good for Twitter and good for speech. I'm saying he's using Twitter to help one of the most right-wing governments in the world censor speech. I will criticize that. Will you? I have to do. I have to look at the story first. I'm not looking at it now. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I don't know. Why, why can't you just say yes? You'd be like, yeah. Now, there's a twist in the story, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Actually, I think it might be the next story we have on the docket here. But Matt Taibbi's bending over backwards here to not criticize Elon Musk, and Elon Musk is going to pull the rug out from underneath him anyway. Even though Matt went to bat for Elon in an incredible way in this interview where he's refusing to criticize him, even on one of his main concerns, his main issues, censorship and freedom of speech. And at the end of the day, Elon impulsively... Uh, swatted him aside anyway.
posted the story two weeks ago. You tweeted oh, at me. Is, invite, I don't watch the Midi Hassan show. You do. Actually, you do, because you tweeted at me saying, invite me on the show, and I'll tell you my views. Here you are. Oh, what you is your view? All right. So I'm going to read this for everybody. Um, wow. This was done at the request of the Indian government, apparently. Quote, Twitter has blocked the accounts of several high-profile Canadians, including NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and poet uh, Rupi Kaur from internet users in India. So blatant censorship from Twitter on behalf of the Modi government in India. Mehdi Hassan says, I'm sure Taibi is all over this. And then Matt quote tweets it and says, why don't you invite me on your show to talk about it since you're so absolutely sure what I'll say? And then Matt, instead of coming on and going, of course I criticize that. No, Twitter shouldn't be working with government. That's the whole point of the Twitter files. It's like Twitter is working with the government to suppress information, to censor. And it's like, okay, what about when Twitter works with the Indian government to do the exact same thing? And he comes on and goes, I don't particularly want to criticize that. Matt, 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 what are you doing, bro? What is this? What is this? Now, look, I happen to, to, to like both of the guys in this back and forth. I like Mehdi Hassan. I like Matt Taibbi. I think Matt Taibbi's reporting on Wall, on Wall Street was some of the best ever, honestly. I think he's a phenom one of the greatest writers. He has a way with words that are just next level, this guy. But I don't know what this is, dude. I don't know what you're doing here. Uh, and it's not, this is not coming across. Whatever impression you're trying to leave with people, their takeaway is that, you know, you won't criticize Elon Musk, even though he's guilty on an issue that you care the most about. And there it is. There it is. Look. Yeah, and you said, look, we'll read your words. Why don't you invite me on your show to talk about it, since you're so absolutely sure of what I'll say? You're right, I'm not sure. What is your view on Musk working with Modi to censor speech? That's I have what to you ask about the particulars about it. But listen, this came up the first time. Uh, I think it was Twitter Files number six. When... When you said uh, after this, this was a big one that we had done about the relationship between Twitter, the FBI and the DHS. And as that story came out, you were giving me a hard time about tweeting through it, I think was the, was the quote. Essentially, yeah. you said you don't. So essentially, you're arguing that this information was not in the public interest, that I somehow shouldn't have done this story that I'd worked hard on uh, because Elon Musk tweeted something. You don't think that's no, a banned journalist? I think if no, hold, hold on, Matt, if you're doing a story about free speech on Twitter and the head of Twitter bans journalists. Yeah, I think most people, by the way, Barry Weiss, your partner in crime on that. You're sorry, your colleague, your reporter. Sorry for that euphemism, your reporting colleague. She actually did call him out. So it's weird that Barry Weiss had more integrity. That's true. I remember giving Barry Weiss credit about that. I'm not a fan of Barry Weiss at all. I like Matt Taibbi a lot more than I like Barry Weiss, but Barry Weiss, as soon as Matt, as soon as soon uh, Elon Musk started banning journalists left and right, Barry Weiss came out and said, this is wrong. I don't know what he's doing. This is insane. And Elon Musk fired back at her with all of his impulsive rage. But she did the right thing. She was principled. Some might argue, your critics might say, than you did. Look, we're running out of time. You don't want to talk about India, that's fine. You can go away and research it. But you volunteered to come on the show to talk about it. I've got to ask you about the clip on Joe Rogan. You've seen the clip. Uh, it, was play, you know, it was mentioned at Congress. I do want to get your response to it. Can we play the clip of you telling Joe Rogan about how you should deal with sources who give you information? How, let's play that clip. With any kind of journalist, like once, once you start getting you know, handed things, then, then you're, you've lost, you yeah. know what I mean? They have you at that point and you got to get out of that habit. You know, it's like, or you just you never, you can't cross that line. So per your own words, Matt, you crossed that line and Musk has you. Those are your words. The hilarity of this coming from MSNBC, which did nothing but vomit up uh, fake Russia Gate stories that came straight from the FBI for six consecutive years. So you guys still look, Matt, fair point. I was a critic of Russia Gate from day one. It smelled fishy to me. Especially like, oh, the P-tape and, and Donald Trump is Vladimir Putin's puppet and all that. It, it, nonsense. There was no evidence for it. There never was. There never will be. They were overreaching colossally. They were working backwards from their conclusion. They were narrativizing. Totally fair game to criticize that. But that doesn't excuse what's going on here in this conversation where you clearly were bending over backwards to not, uh, uh, you know, Criticize Elon Musk, even though Elon Musk is guilty of the exact thing that you care about the most, which is censorship on Twitter. How is he better than the previous regime if he's kept the same levels of censorship or, if anything, increased the levels of censorship? Serious question. I apologize Great. for. Uh, Great. It's, I, I, it's I wasn't there in that period, so I've got nothing to apologize. I'm asking you your words. Uh, did you cross a line? It's a very simple that, question. You can, you can what about and deflect. It's a simple question. We played a clip for you. I'm giving you a chance to answer. Did you cross the line? Your words. No, I did not. The, st the stories, the stories are self-contained stories that hold up in themselves. Uh, and what, what I was talking about in the Joe Rogan story, I was quoting a passage from uh, Seymour Hersh's book, 
reporter when he was talking about when he was given a story by the CIA um, about a, an Israeli spy that they had caught. And he was saying something to the effect of I who had always gotten the material was being handed the, the material. So, yeah, it, look, it, it, it sounds. But OK, why is it worthy of criticism if somebody just like is a stenographer for the CIA? Right. The CIA gives them something. They just run with it uncritically. Why is it like that's bad, which I agree, that's bad. But then like getting handed information from the world's wealthiest man, this billionaire oligarch, and just running with it with his specific uh, framing of it, narrative of it, that's not bad. Look, I, uh, let me be clear here. I have no issue whatsoever with Matt Taibbi doing the Twitter files. In fact, I covered a lot of it because I do think it's important. I do think it's important. I think the main concern here is you can report that story and do it accurately and fairly while also maintaining some semblance of objectivity about Elon Musk. Even if you criticize him with kid gloves, at least you'd be criticizing him. But you're not. <laughs> like, you're not doing that. Bad, but this, this stuff is clearly in the public interest. It's real. It's true. And I'm doing the best I can to report it. Um, the, the question is, it, the, the test you always have with your sources is whether or not this stuff is in the public interest and whether it's accurate. And uh, apparently I've gotten like one thing wrong or a few things wrong, but mostly I think this story, these stories are going to hold up over the test of time, unlike your Russiagate so, story. Um, so, so let me ask you this, Matt, and, and you're going to say this is a bad faith question, but let me just be clear. I'm not questioning your work ethic. You keep saying, you, you seem to be offended. I'm sure you work very hard. Uh, I was a big fan of yours for many years. I've always admired your writing. Uh, and th which is why I have to ask this last question, which you're going to say in bad faith, but I promise it is. It's genuinely for, as a former fan. Uh, you tweeted uh, in response to Jim Jordan, and you started the interview saying, you know, oh, my journey. You have been on a journey for many of us. You said it was an honor. Thank you, Chairman Jim Jordan. It was an honor. A lot of people think that sounded a bit fawning to one of the most right wing members of Congress. Later, you meet Ted Cruz. I don't think it's an honor you, to be invited to, calls, to Congress who calls you a true patriot. He calls you a true patriot, and you're all looking very intense in that picture. I wonder, when you met Ted Cruz, did you tell Ted Cruz that how you wrote in 2015 that he has, quote, big doses of Tea Party energy, and in 2018 that he's like an incurable skin condition? Do you understand why, Matt, those people who have read your stuff find it amazing sure, now, the Ted people Cruz, you are? Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz knows what I've written about him over the years. He knows that I, uh, that I talked about him as, I described him as uh, having a face like a waterlogged <laughs> Reagan mask sewn together at gunpoint. He knows all that stuff. <laughs> but he, but, but the, that's the point. We don't ha this is America. We don't have to agree all the time. I don't have to like him all the time these people all the time they're on this issue they're giving oxygen to something that i think is important that i think a lot of people is important and okay medi's gonna respond to that and i think medi's um rebuttal is 100 percent on point but my main issue is and this is brianna joy gray said this in the debate with matt taibbi as well and i think brianna was spot on too which is your framing is wrong like your framing is just wrong this idea that it's like well, only Democrats and only the left censors the true outsiders who are challenging power on the right. That is just factually false. And when all the stories are framed with that, it biases them in a way that is categorically untrue. And what, like, you turn a blind eye to the endless examples of censorship from the right. So let, I'm going to let Medi make the point because he makes it better than I am right now. He wants to meet me. That's fine. If, if Jim Jordan wants me to come talk in front of Congress, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to answer questions. If I'm wrong about something, I'm happy to answer that too. But I guess, I guess the, where the, we the disagree idea is... That I'm committing some kind of a, a, a capital offense by, by testifying in Congress about my own reporting, uh, answering questions uh, factually, and, and meeting these people is ridiculous. Uh, I guess I guess where we disagree. It, it, it is an honor to talk to Congress. It was an honor to talk to Congress, and and I'm and I'm proud that I did that. I mean, not every congressional committee is an honor to appear in front of. I'm pretty sure it wasn't an honor to be invited when people were invited to the House on American it's, Activities it's, Committee. I mean, this is the point, Matt. The context. We're out of time, sadly, but the context that, is that, that the Republicans, that, exactly the Republicans the are banning, like the Republicans so are banning jokes that. and threatening the press. Ron DeSantis is threatening to get rid of anonymous sources. Again, and you're, you're telling you're us mentioning something that I didn't write about. How many? I didn't say you wrote about it. Well, exactly. That's the problem that you. Boom. That's the problem, Matt. It would be so much easier. Like, it's, it was a battle for me to impress upon people on the left that there are certainly some of the Twitter file stuff you should care about deeply. And the reason why it's hard to make that case is because there was no objective, even-handed reporting on this front where there's just endless examples of censorship coming from the right, literal 
Uh, book bannings that are happening now. You know what the, fir- the number one and number two states are for the most book bannings? Texas and Florida. Okay? So, it's hard to impress Pompeo. This is an issue you should care about when the framework has been super partisan and they've sort of leaned into that partisan framing of it. Where, you know, if you're taking Republicans in the Senate and the House at face value when they act like they care about free speech on social media, have any of them said a goddamn word about anybody who they disagree with getting banned? I'll give you an example. There were prominent, I think it was hundreds of Antifa accounts that were banned on Twitter. By the way, not even under Elon Musk, under the previous Twitter regime. Did they say anything about that? Was there any concern about, oh, this is, a, this is an affront to the First Amendment and freedom of speech, and these people aren't all violent criminals? How could you, how could you censure them and ban them simply because you disagree with them politically? They didn't say a word about that. And again, all this hand-wringing about the, the censorship, which is a legitimate issue under the previous Twitter regime, but now when Elon Musk is in the process of a censorship crusade, if there's no word of criticism for that, then it begins to feel like, and it begins to smell like, People, you guys only seem to care about censorship when it comes from one direction and when it's targeted against one group of people. But when you reverse the dynamic and the censorship is coming from the right against the left, all of a sudden it's like, I don't even see, I don't even know what you're talking about. I never did any, rep- any reporting on that. But that's the problem you should have. If you're going to care about censorship and that's going to be a main issue to you, then you need to report on it across the board, whether it's coming from the left, whether it's coming from the right or whoever, and I'm proud of the fact that I've done exactly that. And Matt Taibbi is a phenomenal writer. Uh, you know, it, he's been amazing in many respects. And that's where I think the criticism is stemming from here. Because it's like, good, okay, make that your issue, crusade on that front, do your journalism, but don't like play hide the ball with all the censorship coming from the right to build this grand narrative that it's only coming from the left. And by the way, again, a wonderful point from Brianna Joy Gray in the conversation with Matt Taibbi. One of the first things I would have dug into the Twitter files to try to find is like, remember in, in uh, 2016 with the whole Bernie bro narrative and the whole, you know, they're backed by Russia narrative. And they, uh, there was a, a bunch of lefty accounts that were getting banned left and right. And uh, if you were Bernie affiliated, if you were populist left, anti-establishment on the left, you were just as much of a target, if not more of a target than, you know, people on the fringe right. And that, that appears to be missing completely from this reporting. So anyway, look, I think, uh, I think ultimately on this one, I think Mehdi's correct. I think Mehdi's correct. I, I don't begrudge Matt Taibbi doing the Twitter files at all. I think it's a good thing he did the Twitter files. I think the framing is the problem. And when you have guys like Ted Cruz and Jim Jordan singing your praises, you might want to reevaluate, hey, why are these guys cheerleading what I'm doing and why are they so strongly in favor of how I've done this and we know what the answer is because they feel like they could use it politically simply to bash Democrats simply to bash the left and to portray them as uniquely censorious at a time when there's a stunning rise in the authoritarian right and they're going as far as doing literal book bannings so anyway there you have it interesting back and forth and um the fight is ongoing by the way Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.